Welcome back to Pips and Chits. My name is Jason, and today I will be unboxing Waste Nights Second Edition from Kickstarter. This is published by Galacta Games. Uh, flew, just flew in from Poland. I was really surprised to go ahead and get this when I did. Um, so let's get right to it and unbox. I'm going to go ahead and use my little utility knife here and go ahead and cut the tape that's keeping this box closed and this is what it came shipped in this is the shipping label right on the outside so um, we'll see what's in and here we are some nice padding here on the side let's see if there's any take this out of the box and uh, let's see move this off to the side I'm sorry about that just making some room here okay we have Waste Nights, so pretty nice. There's no uh, visible damage to the box, which is really good. Surprisingly, I thought it would be a little bit more beat up seeing that uh, that box the way it was. Very heavy game. Um, let's go ahead and turn it over and see what we have here. Oh, nothing written on the back, so there's nothing here to tell you what's going on or what as far as components go on the inside. But however, here on the side here, I'll just read this to you really quick. It's 45 to 180 minutes, one to four players, and ages 14 and up uh, from Galacta, Poland and just has their website on there so let's get rid of this glare and cut into our plastic here get rid of that cellophane okay, wow i can't believe how heavy this is looks like there's a little bit of uv spotting here let's see if i can uh, try to maneuver this a little bit you can kind of maybe see a little bit on camera here both in the motorcycle and uh this character this woman that's standing in the wasteland a little bit of a special spotting there but otherwise nothing nothing on the box so opening it up what do we have here Okay, we have our Kickstarter. We looks like we have an advertisement for possibly another game that's coming up. The Shadow Planet board game. So an advertisement for another Kickstarter here. Kind of in a comic book thing. Uh, it says coming soon on Kickstarter. All right. We have our Waste Nights lore guide full color here or mimicking the artwork uh, that's on the box just a bunch of pictures with names very really nice artwork here kind of talking about the different cities uh, special landmarks the gangs uh, cults uh, machines Let's see beasts that we might encounter mutants and that's that okay our rule book good got the english version that's that's good okay on the back of this we have our chronicle sheet we have our adventure name our knights our entry tokens name effect entry number general notes and epilogue here uh let's see how many pages this is it's 15 pages with a full index right here on the back, but let's kind of flip through this a little bit. We have our game overview. Our first two pages are our components. I won't go into detail there. You could stop and pause this if you want to see a little bit more in detail. Let me try to get that a little, there we go. That's a little bit more straight for you guys. Uh, game setup on page number four. We have player setup on page number five. Playing the game uh, starting on page six and going through uh, page, well, we have combat on page 10. Uh, experience points, uh, upgrading, adventure, plot numbers, starting number of knights. Uh, upgrade cards, general upgrade cards on page 13, and uh, how we treat or how we identify a threat tokens, of course, credits on page 14, 
and uh, again the index there all right kickstarter guide so common versus kickstarter components looks like uh, if you got the kickstarter version you obviously got some extra swag that you wouldn't get in the retail version of the game and it uh, looks like we have some additional knights some vehicles um some night sheets wasteland cards wasteland cards for scrub and mountains i should say this is desert and highways uh scrub and mountains we have some additional gear cards adventure cards some additional tokens we have the outback chronicles and the lore guide which i have previously showed you and 12 personal upgrade cards and let's see we have called waste so it looks like we have some additional uh stretch goals that are kind of explained here some add-ons and possibly some additional scenarios that aren't in the base game we have through the waste add-on the dogs of war add-on the scavenger add-on and oh thank you so all the name of all the backers that back that so hopefully somewhere in here and i'm not even going to try to try to look for mine right now but my i'm imagining my name should be somewhere in here and back here on the back sheet of this page eight we have full uh add-on card list so anything from the, this is a full stretch goal add-ons so all the all the uh additional stuff that came with the Kickstarter version of the game. Okay, moving on, we have some cardboard token punch out sheets. This is labeled uh, two of three up here. We have number three of three, and this looks like some kind of a, something that we assembled, most likely a card holder that kind of mimics a, a crate, a wooden crate, once you put it together. And here is a larger one. This is one, well, double-sided, but one sheet instead of those two smaller sheets. And this says one of one. We have a bunch of different tokens on here. Some locations, it looks like. I uh, don't know what these markers are at all. Um, not even gonna try to guess right now, but it looks like we have some fuel cans, a steering wheel, uh, some kind of camouflaged crate. Uh, some vehicles that look like they got hit. I don't know if that's a damage marker or a collision marker of some sort, but obviously this probably has to do with the vehicles. The next sheet we have here, this is labeled one of three. And of course, a lot of more tokens on here. We have different colors of this symbol here. We have more collision markers. We have these I don't know if they're points of interest markers. Uh, they are labeled one through 10. Some radiation markers, different uh, stuff that you can see here. Some ranks, some military rank stuff. And uh, that appears to be double-sided as well. All right, moving on. This looks like we have the board and it is a big board. So I'm gonna put this box aside just for a second, just so we could take a look at the board. Okay, the board. This board looks absolutely humongous. And I'm imagining it is part of Australia. And we don't know if I'll be able to unfold it all. Or let's see what best I can do here. All right. Don't know if you're going to be able to see it all. Try to get in as much as I can. We have some numbers. Sorry, it's upside down here. But you can see 1 through 10. Um, oh, I'll turn it the other way here. Let's... Okay. All right, so we have a map of Australia, and we have some locations on here, Queens Valley, pumps. Uh, we have a bunch of different uh, hexagons with numbers on them. We have Alice Offsprings, uh, New Sydney here. We have a fissure that's going right down the middle of the continent. Um, let's see up here in the corner I'm gonna fold this up a little bit here just so we can get some more in here we have um, looks like how much movement points there are zero movement points to two movement points depending on the terrain uh, we have threat radiation contamination 
what you can do in the cities. There's city actions. There's says quack, garage, workshop, and stalls. Not sure what all that is, but very, very pretty. And let's see this side of it here. We have uh, Carcassville down here. I'll try to get that in camera. And then we have, looks like it says, spelled a little different, but maybe possibly gang green and uh, the coastline here. So okay, we'll go ahead and take this, put this off to the side and let's get back to the box. All right, we have the Book of Tales. This is a huge, huge book. It is 240 pages. So there is a lot of adventures in here. They're all numbered. Uh, that's great. The Book of Tales for second edition. Here, there's not a lot of artwork in here. It's just basically all text and looks like just a lot of different entries here. Uh, promising to have a whole bunch of adventures in Australia. Okay, next up we have the Outback Chronicles. I really like how they did these books. The, the, the artwork or the production is really nice on this. I, I dig that quite a bit. So we have a place for notes and uh, looks like maybe your character sheets, possibly. We have adventure name or maybe these are just for specific scenarios. Um, notes that you can take for those scenarios. But uh, it's the Outback Chronicle book. That's pretty nice. Next up we have a wirebound uh, book called The Waste Knight's Guide. It is, let's see how many pages this is. I don't really see a page number on here. No, I don't see page numbers on here, but it looks like I don't. I don't want to spoil too much. I don't know if these are spoil. This is spoiler free or not. But uh, maybe these are scenarios. Well, I'm going to guess that are scenarios. So we have trouble in the south, and there's setup, and then we have wild north, and then setup. So I'm assuming that possibly that these are special scenarios in in here that you would not just normally look up. Next up here we have our character sheets. I'm assuming we have Mr. Mall the scavenger. These are, so one side here we have all of our stats and his health, his resilience, what he's holding in his hands, his armor, and on the back side we have a more detailed picture of you for those that want to paint uh, your miniatures to look kind of like what the, uh, what the character should look like. And we have some lore here. So there's Mr. Maul. And what do we have here? We have Sallow Lee. We have Dr. Fang. He's a scientist. We have Johnny Taylor. He is the trailblazer and he has a dog. We have Frank Strezleski. He's the judge. And I'm probably not pronouncing that correct at all. So sorry about that uh alanita the spirit warrior lisa gomez our scout uh, we have zoe shaw she's a mechanic we have jenny burns she is the huntress we have reverend evans he is our priest and he looks pretty nice right there i like his artwork we have nelly thompson she is the stalker we have Warrigal, he is a mercenary. And we have Logan Harris, our Avenger. And of course, all their stats seem to be a little bit different. So hopefully these are kind of asymmetric. Let's get right into the remainder of the box here. Let me just tilt this a bit. We have a Waste Knights bag with silk screen on there, nice. We have a bunch of bunch of dice, different colors here, uh, embossed dice. Um, that's got the color black color kind of uh, burned in there, or uh, I wouldn't say that silk screen. That's definitely embossed. So a pack of pretty pretty heavy dice actually too. Pretty nice and chunky ones. We have some wooden markers here. Don't know what the oh wow. 
oh how nice these have a uh, laser these are laser etched uh, tokens here it looks like location markers this one says the pumps let me try to bring that up to the camera a little bit so you can see that but definitely laser etched on there that's really neat and let's see if the rest of them are like that as well I'm assuming so but uh, yep we have New Sydney uh, Queens Valley, Gang Green, Carcassville, and Alice Offsprings. Some of those locations I already read to you on the map, but yeah, nice wooden uh, lasered tokens. Okay, put those back in the bag here. Looks like we just have some rings, uh, colored rings for uh, bases for our miniatures. Remember, it's a one to four player game, so we have four just standard plastic rings. We have some plastic um, tokens here. Basically, it looks like gas cans, green gas cans, uh, kind of orange medical stuff. And we looks like some gray... Uh, looks like uh, machine gun clips like for an AK-47. So let me pull one of those out so you guys get a closer look at that. Yep, a little token right there. It's a clip for a gun. And of course I dropped it in there. It's okay. Next up we have a bunch of cards in this well here. Nice vacuum. I like how everything's kind of laid out in here. That's going to be easy to put everything back we have vehicles we have a bike off-road we have a jeep uh, off-road another kind of looks like a tank a souped up sand buggy with a bunch of razors or blades on it trucks a pursuit car a muscle car so i'm very excited we're going to be all traveling traveling the wasteland here oh harry the camel look at that camel with a big uh Looks like he's got a gun on strapped to him, uh, anti-aircraft gun of some sort, and he's considered a tank. And we have some, I guess, player sheets, quick reference sheets. Yeah, what to do, night turn, um, your legend, how to combat, combat traits. So that's in there. Okay. Next up, we have a couple decks of cards. Hey there guys, I wanted to go ahead and interrupt my regular unboxing video to interject this little sidebar. Uh, some of you in previous videos have um, said that I didn't spend enough time discussing cards or showing a lot of the cards or explaining cards for other games. So I took that to heart and I went ahead and broke out all the cards from the cellophane uh, in Waste Nights here and I kind of uh, separated them into um, their uh, respective decks and I wanted to take a few minutes here to briefly go over these. However, if you are worried about any spoilers of any way, shape, or form, go ahead and skip this section. You can either look at the timestamp here and move on or just skip this uh, chapter if you will. But uh, I'm going to go really briefly uh, on, on these various decks here. I'm not going to spend a lot of time because, like I said, there could be some spoilers here. And I haven't played the game myself enough uh, to want to learn everything here. But starting from this side here, this is uh, really has no impact on the game. These are This is considered the adventure deck. And if any time you just wanted to randomly choose a specific scenario, either for you and your group, and you had a hard time doing so, you could just randomly pick one of these cards and do the scenario called The Awakening. It really has no impact on the game other than just choosing uh, what one-off scenario you want to do. Next up is the Explore deck and every knight will have a chance as one of their actions to explore their surroundings here and uh, generally you would want to do that if you're running low on resources. It's kind of like a gambling thing. You want to see what's in the uh, in your area. So you could draw some cards up to your um, uh, Explore ability and uh, if you turn one of these cards over, it's divided into four terrain types. You have the highway, 
uh, scrub, desert, and mountains. And depending on where your knight is at that time, they will go ahead and either receive a uh, benefit or, or negative consequence. In this case here, these look all pretty positive here, but I assure you there are negative cards in here as well. So as an example, if we were exploring in the mountains, uh, my knight would find one uh, ammo clip. If he were exploring in the scrub, uh, he would get one experience and then he would have to draw and resolve a, a wasteland card. So these are exploration cards, uh, both good and bad uh, effects, depending on what is drawn. These next two decks here are your more or less your encounter cards, if you will. They are divided again into desert and highway, and then we have scrub and mountains here. And I've included um, all the um, cards from the uh, add-ons as well. And these are more or less going to be the enemies that you're going to face out there or maybe specific plot points, um, you know, or, or certain discoveries uh, that you would randomly come across. So as an example, I'm just drawing this here. This one here would be a tornado and you would do a test. And if you pass the test uh, surviving, you would you would go against your uh, your survival ability if you passed. You would get two experience however if you failed you would suffer one damage and your vehicle would also suffer a damage for each uh, missing uh, hit point so um, different different cards will do different things uh, like this here is an enemy a real tough enemy uh, look at that he's got six health points but if you defeated him you would get three experience and two gas uh, cans he, however, is both ranged and melee, and he would. Uh, uh, this one would have a th an additional threat token of one, and he would roll a green dice and a blue dice, and you would also follow the lore here on the side. So, um, that's your encounter deck here. These ones are special number decks, and these are. Um, really have to do with your specific scenarios. In the core game, I believe it only goes up to 10. However, in the Kickstarter expansion, there's a bunch of uh, add-ons to the game and these add uh, additional um, numbered cards all the way up to 23. I don't want to really turn these ones over because these are relatively spoiler heavy. So just know that in the core game, uh, you have 10. The add-ons will add additional ones, and these will be either items or some kind of specific plot point where you have to make a decision or, it'll, or it might affect you and uh, the rest of the game. These are considered landmark cards. These are optional. This is part of uh, one of the add-ons here, and this relatively, uh, these cards, uh, for all intents and purposes, lower the difficulty somewhat of the game However, it also increases the replayability. Now, your specific knight might have additional uh, personal objectives that they might want to accomplish. Uh, each, the, depending on the amount of players, they would, you know, draw to keep one face down and try to achieve that by the end of the scenario. Uh, moving on. These are <clears throat> these cards here. There's not a lot of them, but these are your injury status cards. Um, you're either injured or you're you are unconscious, and uh, and different injuries would have different effects. Like the broken arm here, you can only use one-handed a uh, one-handed weapon. So if you had a two-handed weapon, obviously you couldn't use it. Um, a strained back, for example, you cannot use armor that takes the armor slot. Place this card in your armor slot to mark this. So your strained back would not allow you, until you were able to heal this, uh, you would not be able to use specific types of armor. Uh, the flip side of it, these are double-sided. You also have an unconscious side, and it basically tells you 
what you would do if you were unconscious. You, I don't think you would necessarily die. I think maybe you do after you hit this unconscious state more than two or three times in the game. But the first time you hit unconscious, uh, you become unconscious, I believe that uh, another party member or a player can help you. Or if you have uh, rest, you can take an action and, and rest and, and heal somewhat back up on that. These next two decks here are going to be your item decks. This is everything from weapons to armor to medicine to very specific items, maybe a set of binoculars or a flashlight or something like that. These are generally double-sided. You have a green per, uh, working side and you have a uh, red broken side. And if they're broken, obviously they're gonna be slightly weaker. You also notice too in some of these cards, not all of them, but some of them, these there might be uh, an icon down here or a picture of your knight. These might be just starting items only specifically for your uh, knight. In other words, only uh, this guy with the eye patch would have the Lawbringer um, as his starting uh, weapon here. No one else could. Also in here in this deck will be. Um, um, your level up cards. When you hit certain milestones or experience at three, six, and nine, you have a chance to level up your character. And there are some generic level up cards that all knights can use, but there are also specific ones that, again, only if that uh, knight uh, is in the picture in the lower corner here, only that specific knight can use those upgrade cards. Next, you have a uh, malfunction cards for your vehicles. Some of these um, oh, will show different, uh, like this one is a leaking radiator. This one is a broken injection. Um, let's see, what is this one here? You have a serious leak. You, you have been pierced through. Whenever you suffer any collision damage, you are also dealt uh, one injury to your knight. So I guess, uh, you know, that makes sense, pierced through. Something went right through your, your door, your windshield, and ended up hitting you. So you best want to take care of these and fix these up at certain cities or uh, you know team up and try to repair your car. So these are bad things for your vehicles. Whereas this deck here, this is an add-on, not in the core game. These are called parts, and these are generally beneficial for your vehicle. So as an example, Wrecking Ball, Advance, um, well, there are some requirements here, heavy or medium. So I assume that you obviously you couldn't put a Wrecking Ball on a motorcycle or your camel, but maybe if you had a tank or something, you could put the Wrecking Ball on here and says you may deal two damage. Then you may discard this card, otherwise your vehicle suffers two damage. So these might be one-time use things. Some of them might be, um, you know, more than one-time use things. As an example, this one says turbo injector. Your vehicle uh, gains plus one speed. So as long as this is on your vehicle, uh, your car is going to always have uh, one additional movement. And then finally... And finally, here we have what we call the city task cards, and there are three cards per location, and I guess you could possibly randomly draw these. These, game, these cards here are optional, and they are part of the add-on for uh, not in included in the core game, and these uh, are, are effectively um, task-orientated goals that your knight might have to achieve. Not only does it make the game slightly longer, but a little bit slightly more complex if you wanted to increase the difficulty. And they have temporary effects on them. Until you complete these cards, once they're revealed, they might have your knight can only do certain things or might be limited to doing one thing and not something else. So these are just uh, additional cards, if you will, to increase the replayability and the difficulty of the game. Uh, making it the, them a little bit more uh, goal orientated and of course because there's three per um, per city you don't necessarily always have to have the same one uh, for moving forward in games uh, lastly I just want to point out on the back of this um, Waste Nights Kickstarter guide 
there is a list of all the different cards that were part of the Kickstarter add-ons or stretch goals and uh, you can add these. These are always optional here. I've added them all in but if you wanted to make the game either easier or more difficult you could uh, go ahead and add and remove those cards and the nice thing is is it actually tells you um, what part of the add-ons that is. So in other words all the city task cards are part of the remnants of civilization add-on whereas if you were to go down to the gear card section um, the different cards here will tell you well some of them are part of the dogs of war uh, one some of them are common uh, whereas the landmark cards are all part of the call the waste uh, uh, add-on here so again you can add and subtract there's a really nice list here to tell you what uh, cards go to what uh, add-on uh, again all optional um, add-ons that is and uh, just it kind of improves the complexity of the game overall so I hope you enjoyed that and with that we'll return to the regular portion of my unboxing video next up is we have uh, miniatures we have two wells of miniatures here our first miniatures, I'll just take this top off. I don't think I'll take them out individually, but I'll try to lift them up to you guys. These are our figures that we've seen um, earlier. The priest and here's our Mr. Maul here. He was, a, I, I believe he is actually an exclusive Kickstarter figure right there. So you can see a guy carrying just a, just a heap load of stuff all over him. So that's Mr. Maul. Um, here is our, here's our priest. Oops, yeah, here's the priest. He was holding a, um, his staff earlier on. Pretty nice. These should be pretty nice and fun to paint. Uh, a lot of detail, but I like the poses. Uh, the poses are nice for painting because there's not a lot of tough areas to get around and try to try to get under armpits or you know really tight squeezed areas like some of them. And the, oh, look at this one, kind of like a Game of Thrones type uh, miniature right there. Let's see, I'll turn him around. We've got a guy sitting on a throne of weapons and they look like all gun barrels and stuff like that that one should be pretty fun to paint so i'm not sure if he's kickstarter exclusive or not but that's a pretty nice figure right there and then we have one more little smaller tray of figures and this one has six figures in it and i'll just pull that up to the camera so you can see those ones in there I don't know the names of all the characters there. That Again, these looks like uh, some of them were mentioned earlier from the character sheets. Some of them, I'm sure, are Kickstarter exclusives that aren't going to be in the retail game. But there is six additional miniatures. And so with this one, we have uh, six, seven, eight. We have eight in this one, plus these six. So what does that make? 14 miniatures. And again, all fits in there really nicely. And we'll go ahead and set all these back in kind of the way I remember seeing them in here. And that, my friends, is Waste Nights Second Edition. I'll go ahead and squeeze all this back in there. And this is the Kickstarter edition. So if there's any questions or comments, please go ahead and leave me one in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this short, quick unboxing of Waste Nights Second Edition. I'm looking forward. I'm actually going to just leave the uh, manual out right now because I'm going to teach myself a rule book. I'm going to spend the rest of the afternoon reading how to play this because I'm very excited to get into this. Anyway, my name is Jason for Pips and Chits, and until next time, have a great time.